You have a well thought checkout flow. Everything is laid out properly, but people still abandon their carts. There are many reasons why they do that, but it can be distraction. So they just got distracted during the process. It can be procrastination. So, well, I'll come back to it later, or I'll come back to it when I have some more time. I'll reach out to my credit card when I have some more time to do that, and so on. You get the grind. And that's why you need an abandoned card recovery sequence in place. But hello, we're in 2021. You don't need just another abandoned card recovery sequence. What you really need is a profit maximizing sequence. Hi, I'm Tafleen from Boo Funnels, and in this video, I will show you how to set up a profit maximizing abandoned card recovery sequence. We'll design a three part recovery workflow and we will offer a personalized coupon code in the second or third email. Further, I'll show you how to design your abandoned cart recovery email. And well, here is the kicker. You'll learn how to make your sequence rule based. But Autonomy 2.0 is out. If you still haven't checked our launch video, the link is in the description and also up here somewhere. Do click and watch it either right away or after this video. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Right, so let's start our tutorial. Now, firstly, I want to show you the checkout page, which is where the abandoned user's journey begins. With Autonomy, you have something called live card capturing, which basically means the moment a user enters their email here for filling out their remaining details, it gets captured. And which means that now, in case they abandon, then abandon card recovery workflow can be triggered on that user. So that's live card capturing for you. And let me show you how it works in action. So I'm just going to enter my email here. So brian.smith at gmail.com. And that's Brian Smith. So supposedly after this, I got distracted or something happened. And of course, I did not continue the process. Now let us go back to Autonomy. All right, so here we are. And from dashboards, we're going to head straight into carts, which is where we'll find the information. So there you go. That's Brian Smith. And that's what they were trying to buy. That was the cart total. And the, uh, the cart is recoverable. So it is in progress. The page is still open and uh, they may or may not complete the purchase depending on, well, you know how badly distracted Brian is. So apart from that, there are other details that you can view as well. So let me look at for this one. So here, as you can see, uh, you can see the payment method. So it shows cash on delivery. That was the default method selected. Uh, the checkout page ID, the last field that they had filled, which was uh, the billing address. And uh, also you can view if they were on the first step or the second step in case it was a multi-step checkout form. In this case, it was a single step, of course, followed by the items that they were trying to buy, the quantity, subtotal and total. So, well, that's how uh, you can see it. And of course, once the cart gets recovered successfully through our automation, it will get added to the recovered tab here and if it doesn't get recovered in a defined time period it will be marked as a lost card which can be viewed in this tab right here now let's go into global settings from here and when you go into cart well this is where you can set the wait period all right so in the cart you can set the wait period here which means the number of minutes after which the cart will be marked as recoverable. So as you can see right now, it's set to one minute. So after a minute, the cart gets marked as recoverable, right? The cool off period, I'll get to that. But first, let me talk about lost cart. This is where you can define the number of days after which a cart will be marked as a lost cart. The cool off period basically means that if a user made a purchase and then they returned to the checkout page within a defined time period, then they will be excluded for the, from the abandoned card tracking. 
Now, as you scroll further, you will see some more settings. For example, here it's GDPR consent, which is very important in uh, times today. So if you want to sort of have a notice on your checkout page so that when users are entering their email address, you can inform them that their email and cart data will be saved to send abandonment reminders. So if you want that message to pop, then uh, of course you have uh, the option uh, to just check this box and you can enter the notice that you would like to display. So this is uh, within the GDPR guidelines and here you can add uh, a, a tag to the contacts entering via the checkout page. Okay, so let's now go and add new and we're gonna create a new automation. So we'll call it abandoned card sequence. There you go. And now this is a blank canvas where this is an event. So you can select an event from here. So just go on select event and you'll see you've got quite a few options here. In WooCommerce, you can choose cart abandoned and then continue. Then click on the plus icon here and choose between direct and conditional action. So we're going to keep things simple and we will not be introducing any rules or conditions at the moment so we'll go with direct action so in, at the top on messaging you've got send email this is what we need to select there are other actions possible as well as you can notice but we will not go over there we're going to simply go ahead in messaging and click send email continue now here you will see that a pre-built template will show up so this is a pre-written abandoned cart recovery email it's really simple it starts off with hi first name now this is a merge tag which you get from here merge tag and you search for first name and you will find the merge tag here to create your email the text is really simple i noticed that you were trying to purchase but couldn't complete the process because the idea is just to remind them that you know, they were trying to complete the purchase, but it couldn't happen. So here we are and they can recover their cart. And this is the items template. This is the cart table. Now I'll show you how to insert that. So you're going to go hit merge tag and here you will search for items. Now, when you select cart items, you will see you have a few options here. So you can choose to present the product, the cart items in two column format or in three column. So where you'll have like three products, one after the other, you could go with rows, that's one below the other, and a table layout where you have a nice boundary around the products, the cart items that are being displayed. And finally, you can have list, which is like a comma separated, which is now let's choose three column for this example. It's going to be nice. So we're going to copy this to clipboard and we will paste it right here. So, well, this is our merge tag and then followed by a simple text-based copy on we have reserved the card for you. Click here to complete your purchase and so on, right? Now, um, I am going to send myself a test email and show you how it looks. So, let me quickly do that. Okay, so there you go. As you can notice, this is the email that I have received. Uh, so that's the subject line. And this is the three column format that we've chosen to display our card items. Now, let's look at some of the other options that you have. Uh, you can mark this email as promotional, which basically means that the user, the recipient will be able to uh, unsubscribe or opt out of receiving these emails. You can add UTM parameters to the links to track it. Uh, there's more. You can set a delay. So this is where you can set a delay from. You can choose to send it immediately or after a set delay or at a fixed time, which is a day and date. Of course, since this is an abandoned card recovery email, delay would work best. And uh, we recommend that you send the email within 30 minutes of the card being abandoned because that's when the user is most likely to come back and complete the purchase. That's it. Once all of these basic settings are configured, you can move out and then you can add action where you can uh, sort of have a sequence of emails going out. And this one could go out uh, after a delay of maybe 24 hours. 
So we choose that from 24 hours from here. That's it. And uh, then there could be a third email which goes out after 48 hours. That's it. Now, of course, you can change the subject line and the content of the email. We highly recommend that you make some tweaks. You do that. And you must keep in mind that if the user makes the purchase, completes the purchase while they're still in the automation, the next email in the sequence will not go out to them. So that's completely fine. It will not go out to them. And also, if they do make the purchase and come back to the checkout, then they will not be part of the abandoned cart tracking, which is because of the cooling period we set. So that's it. Now, next automation that we're going to configure is will be with rules. So I'm just going to delete this box for now and I will add conditional action. So we're going to get a little advanced here, but not too much. So we, what we will do is that if the card total is greater than $35, uh, then we will offer them a discount of 10%, right? So we're going to add action and we will send email here. So this email will say that you get a 10% off on your purchase and just go ahead and complete the order now, right? I will show you how to configure it. And if their cart total is less than $35, then, well, that's it. We, they'll just get a simple email. So uh, we'll just say send email. And this one will not have any discount coupon code, right? So if it's greater than $35, we will offer them a 10% off. But if it's less than $35, we will send them a, an email without a discount coupon code. Now, of course, what you can do is that you can add action here and maybe the first email you can keep generic for both. You can keep absolutely same for both. But in the second follow up email here, you can offer them a discount of 10%. Well, now, I must tell you that I already have a coupon code created over here. It's by the name of abandoned user. Uh, and this is just the description of it. And of course, uh, you know, there's 10% off. That's the coupon amount. So the coupon is already created. I will show you now how to personalize it. So let's switch the interface. Okay, so here we're going to copy this coupon code. So what we will do is that we're going to go into Merge Tags and you will see Create New Coupon. That's the option. So from here, you can select the coupon that you created specifically for this task. Now, the name can be anything that you want. It can simply be save 10 or it can be a personalized name. So I already have copied the billing first name merch tag. So I'm just going to paste it right here, save 10. So it will say something like Jessica save 10 or Brian save 10. And then here you can set the expiry for it, which will help you um, sort of evoke a feeling of urgency. So maybe a set an expiry of three days and you can even go ahead and restrict user email with the coupon code if you want and then you can copy this copy to clipboard and there you go and you can just add a line of text here by saying uh, uh, you know get you can save 10 percent on your purchase when you order right away or when you order today Use this coupon code on the checkout. And we, we can just when you order, and we could say that uh, be sure to use it within three days, after which the code will expire. So that's a great idea. Now, I would highly recommend that you do not send the coupon code in the first email, but wait until the second email to send the coupon code, as we do not want to train prospects to abandon their cards to receive coupon codes. So it's best to keep it reserved with the second one. And of course, when you set a conditional logic like this one, your system becomes game proof. People cannot game it because they only get 10% discount on the second email if their card total is above $35, which is amazing. All right. So another thing that I want to share with you is that this is the merge tag or the short code for your coupon. So well, this entire 
short code is actually for coupon creation. But when you want to copy this merge tag and paste it in your second and third email, then all you got to do is just copy the coupon name until here. That's it. So this will print the coupon name for the user. So um, Jessica save 10 or Brian save 10 uh, based whatever their first name is, whatever they entered on the checkout page. So accordingly, it will print the coupon's name for them in the email. But that's all you need to copy, not the entire short code, because that will only go in the first uh, email. Or you could choose create coupon and send email as separate actions. All right, so with that automation done, let's look at analytics. So you can go into engagement tab, which is right after workflow. And here you will see all the contacts listed one below the other who entered your abandoned cart automation, their details, which is their email, and you will see whether the email was sent out to them, they opened it, clicked it, unsubscribed, and converted from it. You can also see the revenue that you made from them. For example, here we've had a couple of purchasers. So you can see that the email was sent out, they opened it, clicked it, and also they got converted. And that's how much money you made from them. So further, you can view the orders that got placed because of your abandoned cart sequences. So well, these are the two orders, purchased items, the revenue made, and the date on which these orders were placed. So this is really, really awesome because you're getting all of it at one place. You just have to switch tabs and you can see detailed information about how your abandoned cart sequences have performed. Well, that's not it. In the cards tab, like I've already shown you, you've, you can see the recoverable, recovered and lost cards in different tabs. There's also in-depth analytics. So under analytics, just click on carts and here you will see overall how your different sequences are performing. So you might have rule-based sequences such as based on cart total or product specific abandoned cart sequences or generic cart abandonment sequence for your store. You can see how they're collectively performing all at one place. This gives you a health check of your campaigns. And these are the recoverable cards. That is where the email was entered, but they haven't been recovered yet. The potential revenue on the table, the recovered cards, recovered revenue, recovery rate, which is absolute magic number, which really gives you a health check, which really tells you, um, you know, whether you need to improve or you probably need to be proud of yourself, right? And these are the lost cards. Further, whatever data is shown here is also represented in graphical format. So you can switch here into bar graph mode and view the same data in bar graphs of course depends on how on what you're more comfortable with that was all about analytics well this is what brings this tutorial to an end but i have to show you something interesting in connectors you'll see we have twilio so well autonomy you know it connects with twilio and bulk gate sms service and because of which you can complement your email based abandoned recovery sequences uh, with SMS. Now, SMSs have an open rate of 99% plus and a click-through rate of 35% plus. So there's a huge opportunity on the table when you have emails and SMS both going out on strategic time intervals. Well, the results are going to be massive. Your recovery rate, your cart recovery rate will shoot through the roof. But more about that in my next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about live card capturing, setting up an automation for uh, re recovering your abandoned cards, rule-based automation, analytics, and so much more. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment box below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can watch the upcoming tutorials and videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.